Hey guys, what's going on? Okay, so as promised, we've got a uh, little comparison for you today. We've got our EMEC. This is the Planet Eclipse mechanical gun. All right, we're going to compare it to the two other mechanical guns, which are the same gun, sort of. Um, that's going to be your enemy and your enemy pro. Um, these are all in the 150 to 250 price range, and they are all pretty comparable. So we're just going to kind of I'll walk through the steps and I'll, I'll kind of give you my thoughts on them and we'll start lowest price. All right, so we're going to give you the GOG enemy. This is the basic enemy. I haven't done a review on this. Um, I did for the Pro, uh, both models, this year and last year's model, which had some significant differences. But this is the base model, okay? So this is going to give you the HD valve, which is really robust. It's going to give you their little stock barrel, composite, feed neck, it is tightening. Um, but it doesn't have a lever lock or anything, so you'll need Allen keys for that. Um, non on off ASA, braided hard line. Um, you know, this is a great little gun. For 150 bucks. it's probably one of the best values in paintball. Um, this assembly is a cinch. The valve is, like, on damn near bulletproof. Um, it has the Gen 2 enemy core. So, all the perks that you get with a modern spool valve, uh, low pressure, um, gentle on paint, quiet, you get with this. The one thing that is a downside is efficiency. This is something of an air hog um, by like modern standards. So, you know, you can expect the old adage of uh, for a 3000 PSI tank, about 10 shots per cubic inch. So 48 tank, you're gonna get like 480, um, which is not good, but I mean, it's not, God awful. So there's your enemy, and they're 149. That's a hell of a price uh, for the performance that you get. So we step it up. 70 bucks. You're 220, and now you're looking at this Planet Eclipse's new gun. Um, I took this out for the first time last weekend and had an absolute blast with it. It was so fun to play with, um, much like the enemy. But I think the ergonomics on this are better. Um, the spacing here. Forget the fact that it's hoseless. You might care about that, you might not. It doesn't make a difference to me. Um, but this is, uh, and if we get these both up, you can kind of see the difference there. This is like, if you line them up at the bottom lines, you've got a solid inch more spaced out uh, in terms of this here, um, the space in between the grip and the rig. And for me personally, that's just more ergonomically comfortable. Um, shock rate, I actually find the trigger on this this is a hinge trigger um, to be a little bit slower than this I can shoot the enemies faster so a couple things I don't like one on here not that I don't like that I do is the push button safety it's just a nice standard functional safety this has kind of an annoying little it's like a knob I don't know if I can get that in there to see but you have to turn this thing and then it's kind of confusing for some people is it in safe is it not it's it's a bigger pain in the ass than just having a button. Excuse my language. So, um, but that's all. But just like that, you can get to the core of this. You get your fingers near. There's Allen keys if it if it's a little too tough for your fingers. But it's the same kind of thing where it just unscrews and slides right out. So it's very easy to service and maintain. And it's a gamma core, so it's gentle on paint. It's fairly quiet. Um, it's more efficient, like considerably more efficient than this. I mean, like like a couple pods more. Uh, so it's very noticeable. Um, yeah. yeah, you get a little storage compartment in here and the grips are nice. There's a little button on the back you can flip and then the grips actually pop off. It's pretty cool. You don't need a tool or anything for that. What I don't like about this is the ASA. While they both have standard ASAs, this one I find to be a pain in the butt. Um, I don't know if it's just mine or if this is uh, typical, but the pin in here is very long. Um, too long for my tank, so when I screw my tank in, it'll, it'll vent a lot of air before it seals. Um, I've tried that with two tanks and I've had the same issue. They're both first strike tanks, so I'm not sure if it's a tank or the ASA, but when I look in the pin in here, it's considerably longer than the pin in my other ASAs that are fixed. So the Pops is probably definitely worth getting. It's a $50 upgrade, but it's a really nice uh, on-off for this. Moving up to the highest tier in cost, the Enemy Pro. Um, it's basically the same as your Enemy, 
for a hundred dollars more. I should say it looks the same as a regular enemy. Uh, it, it's the same kind of gun, same core inside, um, but it has some real key differences for that price. For one, you get an inline freak barrel. So by far, this has the best barrel of the bunch. All right. Um, you have a on-off ASA. Unlike the first-gen enemy pros, which had these crappy little knobs like the ones they used to put on the old shockers, like the uh, NXT or whatever's, uh, way back in the day, um, these have these nice lever locks. They work great. Um, they vent. I really like that. Uh, you got macro instead of hard line. They don't normally match colors. I just did that because I had the bits. Um, this is the only one of the three that has a metal lever locking feed neck, so it's all aluminum, whereas the base enemy doesn't have a lever at all. The Eclipse one does. It's composite. It's still nice. Uh, this one here is all metal. And this has a HE valve. It's an upgraded valve from GOG. Uh, not the bolt. Uh, it, it's not the bolt system. That's the same in both. It's the valve that actuates the bolt, and it's like here in the top of the grip frame. It bolts to the bottom of the body, like right in here. Um, and uh, it's faster, the trigger's shorter, and they claim it's about 30% more efficient, which I buy because I can get about a pot and a half more out of this than I can with this on the same smaller tank. Um, on a 6845, I was getting two full pods more. So definitely a plus there. So where do I rank them? Which one do I prefer? I have all three. Ha ha, I win. I don't have to make a choice. And it'd be a hard choice if I did because they all serve a different purpose. This is super basic if you're on a budget or you just want like something to get and build up over time for 150 bucks the performance you get out of a basic enemy is outstanding um i say the kp3 is like my favorite pump for the dollar uh the enemy is probably my favorite mech for the dollar the emix a nicer place to be honestly um it costs 70 bucks more it should be a nicer place to be but it feels better in your hands um it shoots, I mean, they shoot about the same. They, you're shot to shot. If you're shooting one, then you go and shoot the other. Each one has its own unique kind of feel when you're holding it. But as far as like the shot quality, they're both excellent. Um, I, I don't know. It's, it's really hard to, to pick a winner there. Um, the Enemy Pro is $30 more than this guy. Meh. But, um, for that $30 more, you get a better barrel, you get a, well, I don't know that I call it a better feed neck. It's, it's metal if you care about that. Um, definitely get a better ASA, and your gap in your efficiency difference between these two is much smaller than the efficiency gap in these two. Um, my favorite of all these to play with is probably this with a Freak XL on it. Uh, I, did that last week and I had a blast with it and the only reason that I would say this is more comfortable all set up with a nicer barrel than this is ergonomics um, my primary guns a shocker CVO and the spacing on this ergonomically when I hold this it feels a lot more like the shocker than this does just it's just a preference for as far as how it feels I love them both uh, I shoot them both um, this was used at the Iron City Classic. It was used at a five-man mechanical tournament. It was used in a couple scenarios this year. It's just been an awesome gun. This is gonna see a lot more use. Um, I have a Carbon Fiber Freak XL for it that I cannot wait um, to get back on the field with just because it was a lot of fun to shoot. They all are. So, um, I can't pick a clear winner. I've tried. <laughs> I, I could argue with myself for days about which one of these I like more, but they all have their merits. Um, I can shoot this faster than the EMEC. The EMEC feels a little bit more comfortable in my hands. Um, they both put paint exactly where I want to put the paint. They both do it well, really, really well. Um, so, I mean, there you have it. If you're on the fence about what you want to buy, the only suggestion that I can make is hold them first because they just feel a little different in your hands but uh, I think the best value of the bunch if you want like peak performance for a dollar is probably the enemy pro um, 
I wouldn't have said that probably last year because the standard enemy and the enemy pro had a few less differences. Uh, but this year's enemy pro is really solid with the, um, the AG valve is a huge improvement for efficiency and the new on off is so much better than the old one. Another factor that might be swaying you is what are your other barrels? This is cocker thread and the enemies are ion threaded. So, you know, if you have a bunch of cocker barrels already and you're not going to have to invest in another one, maybe this becomes a better value for you. Um, I'm ordering a pops for mine because I loathe the ASA. And uh, yeah, just pop a bit of barrel on and you're ready to go. So that's all I got for you. Uh, happy shooting. We're in a really good place to have so many options at such good prices. This is something in the 20... I'm old. 25 years I've been playing. I don't think I've ever recall seeing a spread of quality guns at this kind of price. So uh, if you're a mech player, it's a really good place to be. Thanks, guys.